Come on in, you guys. Welcome to the show. This is the Arroyo Show. My name is Brandon Arroyo. If it's your first time here, please give it a thumbs up and a subscribe. What a guest we have for you today. You can see her portraying the role of Phoebe in the Amazon Prime new film, The Map of Tiny Perfect Things, set to release on February the 12th. Please welcome Anna Makami. Anna! Thank you so much for joining us. How are Hello. you? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the movie is about to drop Valentine's Day weekend. When you think of Valentine's Day, what memories come to mind? If I'm being completely honest, it's the abundance of Rice Krispie treats for me that always came with Valentine's Day. For you, though, what comes to mind with Valentine's Day? Uh, of course, first, chocolate, which oh, I love. So good. Um, but I don't know. I just thought of my just like this horrible valentine's day experience i had in middle school really um yeah i had a crush on this guy and we could like give people valentine's day cards and i thought i would like confess my feelings to this person you know secretly anonymously so like i decorated my card and i was like here i almost said his name okay i was like here person <laughs> here person here's my card but you don't know it's for me and like snuck it into his desk um, turns out that I was kind of stupid and I gave my friends Valentine's Day cards and they were formatted exactly the same way. Oh no. So even though I didn't put my name on there, like they were smarter than, like he was smarter than I was and was able to figure out like, this is probably from the same, <laughs> the same person. <laughs> and so everybody from that day on knew I had a massive crush on this guy. Oh. So that was my horrible valentine's day experience okay yeah. <laughs> just to continue to rip the band-aid off of that past healed wound what was there at least a good response did he come over and say i'm in love with you too seventh grade anna no no no, oh, no. no. i i'm pretty sure it was like the worst possible where he just kind of like his friends made fun of me but then he just pretended like i didn't exist those jerks like the worst what yeah. are the friends names so that everybody on the internet can just be so no, mad at no. them we no. are coming after no, you, fine. friends of Anna's crush. <laughs> I was going to say I'm over it, but I'm clearly not because I'm still remembering it. To this That's day. definitely a day that like you kind of just delete from your memory and say, you know, we're past that. It's not going to we're yeah. not going to think about that. And then it'll sneak up on you at like 3 a.m. Like, like now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you're welcome for bringing this childhood trauma back into your life. Um, yes. Definitely not a day that you want to relive. But going back to the film, Mark and Margaret are stuck in living the same day over and over again. We're soon going to find out how they spent their time during that day that they've lived over and over again. But I'm curious, mm -hmm. Anna, how would you spend your time if you had the same day over and over again that you had to live? Um, I think I would. Okay. So I always try, I always think about the first time I experienced something that I know I like, you know, right. like I wish I could relive the moment I tasted like chocolate or like ramen or something for the first time. Facts. So I think I would, I think I would try and try new things like new experiences or new food. Yeah. So that I can like forget it and then relive it again, like reliving Ugh. like that moment of where I'm like, oh, like this new thing that I love, you know, tasting it for the first time. Yes, that's so yeah, good. Food. Or like the first time for like the first time you saw a movie that has a surprise ending or like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So good. Oh, my God. You just hope that it's not a day where it's like you have to live the same day over and over again. But it just so happens to be the day where you like just sat around and did nothing all day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or something really embarrassing happened to like, you know, my Valentine's Day story. <laughs> but I'd, I'd like to think that it would be a good day where I'm just trying new things and tasting food. It's like all going to it's all going to circle back to that Valentine's Day over and over yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, uh, it so is. I, I've actually yeah. never told this story, but I had a similar type of situation where I okay. made out a Valentine for this girl that was just like super like I had a huge crush on. I think I don't remember mm -hmm. if it was in elementary school or middle school. Anyway, yeah. I like wrote her name all over the envelope and I was like, this is specially made for you. I gave out Valentine's that day and it was like the thing where you would go to everybody's desk and you would give a Valentine's Day gift to, or Valentine to each person. When I got to her desk, I realized I had already given her Valentine to somebody else. <gasps> so I don't know who got that Valentine with this girl's name all over it. Oh. They probably saw this and they were like, what the? F like, <laughs> so oh. whoever got that Valentine, it wasn't meant for you, but it, uh, 
<laughs> so that we all, we both have some uh, some horrible Valentine's Day memories of, of childhood. <laughs> yeah, did the girl get it eventually? Because it, it had her name written all over it. I'm assuming she... someone would be like, "Oh, this belongs to you." <laughs> Honestly, or were they I, like, "This no can idea. be for me"? <laughs> right. yeah. Wouldn't that be great if they were like, "Yeah," <laughs> what was it uh, like? Subconsciously, they were like, "Yeah, I'm gonna live this." fantasy out that this yeah. this person with the valentine this was me it's good yeah cool. they just like crossed out all the names and like this is mine now i have this a secret been, admirer these were for Susie. this is for me this is yeah. For <laughs> yeah all right so anna you can see you portraying as phoebe in the new film map of tiny perfect things i always love to hear these stories do you remember who you were with what you were doing when you got the call that you were going to be booked as phoebe yeah, I think I was just like hanging out with a friend. And I think whenever your, I guess, reps call you and your friends are there and they're not in the business, there's like this like eye that you give each other that is like, what is this going to be? Is this going to be like a, or is this going to be like a, you know? <laughs> and so I was looking at, at her and she's just like, yeah. And I was like, so it was a, it was a good moment. It was a good moment. Cause most of the time it's like, you know, right. So that yeah. one time, I think that there's a movie where they do that, right? Like they're fighting animals and then they give them the thumbs down and that means the person lost or whatever. That That's like your new <laughs> moment. You can even fake out your friends sometimes like, give it a, yeah. a quick thumbs down. But no, this is a good one. Your girl is Phoebe. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you recently released the film Souvenirs as a director mm -hmm. and a producer. What was that experience like for you to be returning to behind the camera? Um, oh, I don't know. It was uh, crazy because it's the first time I've directed something that I didn't write. Um, it was part of like a film festival. I had submitted my short to something and then they were like, make a movie for us. And I was like, <laughs> what? This happens. Um, and it was crazy. It was my first time being, I guess, a kind of like a director for hire. Um, I felt like I was able to really flex my directing muscles and work on things and kind of see like what directing and acting have in common um kind of see how like my ability as an actor helps me as a director like I used to be pretty insecure about the fact that I didn't come from a technical background so um I'd be like oh look at this director like he was a cinematographer for 10 years or something but I was like you know what like me acting actually gives me an angle in directing and um it kind of gave me confidence doing this feature that I, I have value in this area, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It's such a great time period too right now because there's such a huge push for female directors and so much mm -hmm. spotlight being put on that. I got to imagine that's a good feeling for you to be a part of such a big change in the business that is so long overdue to finally be happening right now and you get to be at the forefront of it. Oh, I don't know about forefront, but yeah, it does, it does feel good. It does feel good that there are initiatives encouraging people like myself to get out there a bit more and have more opportunities for sure. Did you always know that you wanted to be involved with film? Did you always know you wanted to be an actor? No, no, not at all. Uh, I kind of figured it out in high school, maybe a junior year of high school. I think we had to do like a mandatory fine arts credit. And I was a terrible at drawing. I can't do anything like regarding painting or drawing or anything, music, no. <laughs> and I was like, drama. And then I, I kind of found myself in drama and theater. And uh, yeah, that's, I guess that's the story. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, that's such an experience that it's like, to be able to jump into something that you didn't know that you were going to like, and then you tried it, and then it became something that, from that point forward, really had a huge impact on your life. That's really yeah. a cool thing, and I think it just goes to show that whether you're in high school, whether you're in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, to try new things, because you never know what it is that's going to be something that's going to bring you so much joy. So everyone out there listening, make sure you try new things. It's so important. And just like living the same day over and over again, if you had to live today over and over again, make it something that counts, make it be something that you would want to live over and over again. So it's very exciting. I'm so happy for you that you were able to find uh, the fine arts there. All right. So over the last decade, superhero movies, comic book movies have hit a golden era. You were able to take part in it with Birds of Prey. What will you remember the most about your time working on that project? Um, I was only a bit in it for a bit, um, and I was hanging upside down, and I got my face licked and caressed and sliced off by Ewan McGregor and Chris, so that was kind of crazy. That's something I would remember. It's just being like, wow, like, look at these huge stars upside down, but I'm upside down. But anyway, um, it was just crazy. Um, 
being in this situation with these like mega stars where I was being killed by them, I guess. <laughs> Like, I didn't realize that I'd enjoy the sensation of being murdered, but I guess I did. Yeah. <laughs> That's like, so, okay, there's so many people all around the country that are like, would love to just bump into Ewan McGregor somewhere at, walking randomly. You got to work with somebody who is in your field and is one of the top people in his craft. When you have a moment like that, does it ever just feel like surreal almost that you're sitting in this this moment? Oh yeah, totally. Um, I I so, totally feel so new to this business. Like, you know, I I don't know. Like, I was just like, what is what is what is going on? Like, one of my first gigs was with like just like a couple lines across Natalie Portman, and that one I was also just like, just breathe, just breathe, just breathe, just breathe. <laughs> and I almost had to like not look at her. Um, the same with same at in um, Birds of Prey. I. I just have to like forget who they are sometimes. I just have to pretend like it's just some person that is acting with me or else I'll just freak out and forget all my life. As we begin to wind down the interview, we have something called the final five. They are the last five questions of the interview and they are all about the who, what, when, where, and how of you right now. So the first question is, who do you speak with the most right now? Probably my boyfriend. Yeah, who just, I mean, every day. I just talk to him every day. And you know yeah. what? You guys have valentine's day weekend and a new you movie will you guys be watching the movie of you on valentine's day oh yeah of course no choice no choice <laughs> yeah <laughs> what item other than your phone do you use each day oh god my ps4 <laughs> oh gamer in the house what's the game yeah. we're playing right now um i've been playing a lot of apex a new season just came out and i'm trying to climb up to rank on solo queue so that's what i've been doing so i any, just i'm very attached to my playstation <laughs> anybody that wants to challenge you they just need to bring it because you're gonna bring it because you're climbing up those ranks i'm trying yes <laughs> please play with me i need help i'm stuck in plot <laughs> have you done twitch yeah. Uh, I've I've been thinking about it actually because I've been gaming all my life, but I'm I'm a little shy, so I don't okay. know. I'll think about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. When did you know that you wanted to pursue acting at the level that you are pursuing it right now, as more than just a hobby? Um, uh, I think when I decided to major in it, uh, my parents were like, "You either go to Tisch, which is apparently this good school in New York." So I'm from Hong Kong, so no one did acting. Um, either you do that or you get in and you do that or you do journalism or something. And I got into the school. I got into the one school that they would let me apply to. <laughs> so that's when I knew. I was like, I'm stuck now. I have to do this. Yeah. Where is your dream vacation? Iceland. Oh, Iceland. Iceland. Where yeah. do, why Iceland? Where did that come from? When did you first think, oh, my gosh, I'd love to see this place? Uh, Northern Lights. I don't know. Like I also the concept that if you're there in the summer, it's really cold and like the day never ends. Like I hear it's bright until like 3 a.m. in the morning. And I would just love that experience of like having a drink, you know, having dinner and it's like completely bright outside. So, yeah. Final question of the final five. How do you define success? Being happy and also doing what you love. Yeah. That's <laughs> she is Anna. You can see her this Friday in Amazon Prime's The Map of Tiny Perfect Things. Anna, if you're with us right now, we got a couple of seconds here. Why should people go check out the film on Valentine's Day weekend? What do you have to tell the people? Because it's an extremely cute movie. It will make your heart beat and race like a teenage girl. Like, like, I know because I was like, oh, my God. Like, when I read the script, I was like, this is the cutest thing. I just can't wait to see <laughs> what happened. It's it's adorable. You should definitely watch it. Yeah. You can see her portraying Phoebe in Amazon Prime's new film, The Map of Tiny Perfect Things. It is releasing February the 12th this weekend. Anna, thank you so much for giving us some of your time today. Oh, thank you. 